Hey guys, Gamblefish here, and um, I'm with here with a 2v2 Ultra Funds match versus none other than, believe it or not, Mr. Miyagi and his clanmate Bronsan, Bronsan, whatever. Um, some of you may have seen my previous battle with Miyagi, which was a 1v1 Ultra fight that came down to the wire and I barely scraped out of it. And uh, apparently Miyagi was eager for a rematch because... Uh, he brought his A-game, for sure. And uh, this battle did not disappoint in the slightest. It goes down to the wire, and despite the fact that I, over here on the right, get uh, crushed pretty quick, um, it ends up being pretty exciting. Let's do a quick rundown of what everyone's got here. Um, Huma is hiding some matchlocks in the woods over here. Uh, it's a common tactic to use if you suspect your opponent's going to field a lot of cavalry, which is almost undoubtedly the case if it's a 22k battle. Because you're hoping the cavalry's going to come out and try and scout what's in the woods, maybe reveal some hidden dudes, and reveal them they do, because they get shot to death, and one volley is usually enough to drive off a cavalry unit. Um, he's also got uh, some great guard and some Yari cavalry hidden in the woods over there, some more cavalry over here. His uh, main line is Naginata Samurais, and yeah, pretty much Naginata Samurais, and a couple units of bow monks. Um, over here, I'm fielding... Man, the replays removing this thing is really annoying. This is part of why I switched off this black flag, because I can't even tell, in a replay, what kind of units I have. Um, I've got Naginata Samurai as a meat shield, as I usually do. I've got uh, Naginata Warrior Monks in the back, a middle line of Katana Samurai, and uh, two units of uh, Gun Monks in the back, my melee general, and four units, two Great Guard and two Yari Cavalry, hiding in the trees here. Um, Miyagi as he is wont to do, a word of advice to those who might play him on Ultra Funds, loves his melee units, his swords, his uh, spears, and I'm assuming a ton of cavalry, and by assuming I mean I know, because it's a goddamn replay. I've done the battle once. His partner is uh, pretty much the same kind of guy. He's got a couple gunmen, but besides that, he is loaded up on the infantry. So this is already promising to be pretty, pretty awesome clash down, considering that uh, we've only got Naginatos over here and pretty much only Katanas over here. So, let's get this started. Uh, with a map this big and so many guys, there's not really many flanking maneuvers you can do that's not going to be seen by the opponent. So I decided to screw subtlety, send my melee dudes up to the front to try and capture this um, uh, farmhouse. And, uh, well, eventually I sent my cavalry out. I decided... Uh, because whom we agreed beforehand we were going to form up like so, because we can't let them capture the armor shrine. That's one of the most powerful shrines in the game, or dojo. And uh, the farmhouse is sort of eh, but it provides a large staging ground for both of us to sort of maneuver into, and we're hoping they've come in the same way. So I send my Naginatas up to be a shield to take the brunt of the charge, Katana's behind, War Monks in behind, and the gunmen right in front of the trees, because they can't get flanked by cavalry, and I'm hoping they can get some shots off. It's sort of my thought process at the time. I finally decide to send out my cavalry, and as you can see, haven't seen all of Miyagi's stuff yet, but he's already decided to send a detachment of Naginata warrior monks up to the hill. I totally didn't anticipate doing that. It was probably a really good idea for two reasons. One, it means I can't straight up charge from behind to hit his guys, and as you can see, his cavalry pop out of the woods. And two, um, it provides a good way to get a flanking maneuver out if this battle goes a long time, and with so many melee infantry... Uh, you're pretty much guaranteeing it is going to go a long time. Um, so that was a pretty clever move, and I didn't really plan for it at all. Uh, I see his guys coming, of course, and I don't want to get engaged with this cavalry too close to his Naginatas, because that is just a death sentence. You can't disengage from the cavalry fight without losing a lot of guys, and you can't engage his Naginatas at all without losing a lot of guys. Um, let's just get a quick, with these big battles, it's hard to get a good image of everything that's going on. You might want to look at the mini-map. Um, they're deploying pretty much exactly as we are. We're forming up a line here. They're flooding over the hill to sort of find a unified battle line here, and uh, everyone's getting ready for a serious clash up. I decided to charge one of his units while I have the advantage, and I did indeed get a pretty good charge off, but for some reason I ended up losing more guys than he did on it. Really weird. Same thing here. I had a height advantage. I decided maybe now would be a good time to just sort of charge in. Maybe if I can break them fast enough, bring out. I uh, really goofed on the cavalry maneuvering over here. I sort of gave up our right flank because... I allowed the Naginatas to get too close to engage my cavalry. I should have just swung around, had a constant threat looming back here. He could have sent his Naginatas up. I wouldn't have cared. I would have tried to engage his cavalry on a big open flat out here. Anyways, you can see that his Naginatas are flanking my Yari cavalry. One Yari is dead. 
I'm like, okay, both my Yaris are gonna die. Let's pull the Great Guards out and see what I can do. And I got tied up by the Yari Cavalry back here, the Katana Cavalry and the uh, Nagidar Warrior Monks. So at this point, I'm sort of assuming that my Cavalry's all dead, because they are. And uh, Miyagi's got the right flank under control. Um, Bronson's coming at me with these gun guys trying to get a couple shots off. So I send my gun guys up, trying to get a couple shots at him before he can do that. Activate extended range. Uh, I was sort of a goof. I didn't realize how important it was to stretch your much like monks out so the, the entire front line can shoot. But I still managed to get a couple awesome volleys off and sh mess up his his match like Ashigaru or something fierce. Um, which is good because they're high level veterans. And because besides our two units of guns, that's it on the entire battlefield for, for melee units. Um, let's go back and check on these cavalry. Uh, I think, yeah, I managed to disengage one of them, a 15 man unit. Uh, which is actually going to be pretty relevant later on. And I did what I should have done the entire time, which is just send them around and flank. Luckily, I managed to kill off most of his cavalry. So he's only got these three dudes coming around down here. Uh, over on the other side, I've managed to break and route, thanks to some timely help from the bow guys, um, his match like Ashigaru, meaning that the only things left on the field are melee units. And at this point, you should be pretty happy, because melee units, it's easy to sort of maneuver. Uh, Miyagi decides to start sending out his katanas, and um, I was apparently an idiot and sent my gun guys all the way up here. Did get a couple good volleys off on these uh, guys before realizing I had to pull them back. Um, see, now we're looking at this problem before from the Naginata Warrior Monks flanking me. I wasn't really sure what to do. I sent a Katana Samurai and one of my Naginata Warrior Monks over. I think I eventually sent another Naginata Warrior Monks. You gotta, I like to have a couple with the main battle line because the Warcry ability is just so good at breaking down uh, the resistance of these guys. As you can see over here, the, the toughest thing on a 22k battle is the sheer scale and micromanaging all your units well. I go over here to try and engage them. He just separates one of his katana samurai. He's playing everything really brilliantly, right? But in the meantime, I managed to get in one good maneuver of my own, and as he sends his Naginata warrior monks over, he doesn't notice my great guard going straight for his bodyguard. Um, back up at the front, I was pretty confident that my meat shield had worked because they had delayed the charge of their katana samurai and thus mine get sort of a free charge in on them um, and I really thought that this line of battle was going to be something I was going to dominate. I've got the Nagata Warrior Monks in the background coming up to unleash some war cry. I've got my general right here who's a melee general and uh, my Kensei Katana Hero guy coming up to meet the main line of battle and it looks like I'm doing pretty well. His general is down to two men and is about to waver and break. That's fantastic news for me. Um, the problem is while I have this main line sort of under control, sort of not, because it's Katana Samurai beating me, on the the left and the right, uh, these Naginata Warrior Monks are perfect for flanking, because even if you shoot them, cut them up, do a lot, they just will not break. Um, and he piles on this side, and even with a couple units of guns firing at them, and my general holding them off with his bonsai ability, uh, there was not too much I could do to prevent him from flanking me. Now, I sort of unfortunately ignored what was going on over here which looks like at first glance like Mr. Um, Huma is getting the shit kicked out of him right totally surrounded and everything like that you'd be surprised uh, over here luckily I do have this core of battle line that was set up pretty well as, as, as of from before and uh, my gunman got a lot of kills off and I end up killing more guys than I even brought to this fight in this whole meltdown here because my katana samurai were so high level over here these bow warrior monks despite the fact there are only two of them are shredding the poorly armed uh, he has no dachi samurais and a couple um, uh, katana samurai and he managed to hold everybody up in a little ring here and slam them with a really, really, really effective charge. I mean, they were just... He didn't was not he was sort of not in the line, but it ended up working really well because he just plowed into them. Over here, I'm accepting the fact that defeat is inevitable, and I get all my guys together, and I just try to kill as many as possible because I'm, I'm thinking right now that we're totally screwed, right? As you can see, the number of flags does not necessarily correspond to the number of guys because if you come down here, um, a lot of his dudes... That's my guy. A lot of his dudes are down to 10 men, 9 men, 4 men. I mean, his guys may have won the battle, and they may have uh, had the rally ability to keep them from um, breaking. But they were definitely, definitely, definitely... Oh, my general got hurt there. They definitely were, were run down a lot. Um, as you can see over here, we're getting a flanking maneuver that was sort of delayed reaction, but ended up being good delayed reaction, because... Uh, uh, his whole army ended up trapped in this little circle and didn't have anywhere to go. So when the guns started going off and the archers started going off, um, Bronson got trapped and most of his army gets killed. 
Um, unfortunately, doing a, a flanking maneuver like this allowed his general, uh, Huma's general, to get surrounded and hurt, um, and the archers to get attacked from behind because you can't do everything at once. But on the bright side, you got the matchlock warrior monks slaughtering some great guard and uh, getting the melee around here. And it looks like we actually still have a pretty good chance. Going back over to check out what Miyagi's got left. All those men. This is maybe 70 guys left out of his entire army. All his cavalry's dead. His guys are really ragged, and they're starting to get tired. I'm thinking, you know what? We've got a lot of cavalry. We've got a little bit of infantry left, and we've got two full units of matchlock punks. We are in good shape. Huma realized what was going on, got his general out of harm's way, sent in and broke the remainder of uh, Bronson's army before Miyagi could get his remaining troops down here to like sort of reinforce that battle line. And uh, I'm thinking... With two units of matchlock monks, and he only has melee infantry left, we could—they could basically just—we can just shoot them to death. Is the idea? Um, unfortunately, there's one unit of great guard that comes down, um, gives a little bit of trouble, and the other cavalry are sort of stuck up here with the only unit of the only unit of melee infantry that uh, Huma's got left, and he manages to sort of kill off or hurt a lot one of the units of uh, gun monks. Okay. So now we've got Miyagi moving in to try and reinforce this. We've got these bow warrior monks that have no, no ammo left and are trying to run in there. And we've got these Naginata warrior monks that are trying to get back here to kill off the great guard in time to set up a new battle line, get some shots off. He manages to pull off his warrior monks, get him, uh, the matchlock monks, get him on the side, and uh, set up a good shot here. The problem is, for matchlock monks to be truly effective, you got to get repeated volleys. And we no longer had anything to hold the line with, which I think was our downfall. Um, despite the fact that we had so many units left. Because uh, despite the fact that this Naginata Warrior Monk gets the shit kicked out of it, I'm pretty sure, and uh, that he doesn't have any guys left, um, Huma couldn't really effectively get his uh, matchlock units. Oh man, look at that, just shredding this dude here. I'm thinking, look at this. You got the time, the uh, battle thing over there. It's sort of edging in our favor. I really, really thought we had this. And um, pull the guns out, maybe hold them with your general, swing around. He's got some guys that are breaking but back in the distance the only the, the one thing you're missing for a effective either a hammer and anvil with the uh, with the cavalry or a uh, I don't know hammer and or anvil and shoot them a lot with a gun guys you didn't have a line of battle to hold them and it eventually just ended up collapsing the problem with war cry is that it reduces movement speed so you can't actually run away from them fast enough to get out and um, they got the momentum back the cavalry wasn't enough and as we will see this battle came down to the wire really close a lot of dead guys here we had a line of battle here that ended up um, snaking like this you can see this line of battle everyone died in one like spot right here and up on the cliffs and things and it was an epic showdown and Miyagi got his revenge for now <laughs> we still need to do the rubber match anyways it was a great fight I love 22k matches that come down to the wire like this they're so exciting to play they're even more exciting to watch when they're happening and despite the fact that I kinda messed up and put Huma in a spot where he had to deal with both armies by himself at the end. Sorry about that, Huma. Um, it was a fun fight, definitely. And uh, you can learn a lot from defeats like this, just like the one against uh, Matthew, who is the current Shogun. Anyways, that's uh, the end of this video, unfortunately. No surprise forces to save us from certain death. And this is the glorious result after both of our armies have finished killing each other. This little group right here.